welcome to the fifth video of this series on meditation and contemplative photography. Today we will mainly talk about self-portrait. But before that, let's have a look at what we spoke about last time. Last time, and the time before that, we spoke about street photography. A way to explore and a way to be immersed in the world that surrounds us. In fact, as meditators, our aim is certainly not to refuge in an isolated world, but through meditation, we aim to live fully aware and open to people and reality. And if possible, we can introduce a bit of irony, self-irony and joy in our photography, in our practice of meditation and therefore into our ordinary lives. So we try to do a couple of exercises. The first one consisted of sitting in a place that we considered interesting and consisted in wait for something to happen. And always something happens. We just need to be attentive enough and aware of what's going around us. The second exercise consisted in moving around our neighborhood, looking for something very specific. In this case, we were chasing a color. It was red, as an example. But not only something colored in red, but a picture that really gives the sense of redness. This means that taking away the red color from that picture, nothing else remains. So it was a very specific exercise that might bring us to be ready to catch the fraction of time or the portion of space that resonates with our soul in that specific moment. And our journey consists of two more videos. There are six in total, so in this last two, we will consider the we will consider exploring our own self and the self of others. So we will talk about self-portraits and portraits. Today we start with self-portrait, which is not the practice of the so-called selfies, which is social media like Instagram and Facebook about. We have entitled these videos Time and Discipline because it takes a fair amount of time to come to the conclusion that we do not know ourselves. And a lot of discipline, effort and determination to walk the way of meditation that leads us to the center of our own peculiar self. And if you want, it's the same with contemplative photography. I think, therefore, that we should approach this type of photography, which is very intimate and hidden, starting from the point of view of how Father John Main, Father Lawrence, and our community consider our self. In the fifth week of the six week course, of introduction to meditation, our teachers talk about the following topic, leaving self behind, meditation and discipleship. In this vision, meditation is the gentle, loving discipline that helps us in a sometimes mysterious way to transcend our ego and find our true self in the center of our heart which is that silent place inhabited by the divine. Yet this is something that we have in common, that we share with many other traditions around the world. Many mystics meditated simply asking themselves one question only. What am I? Or who am I? It's definitely an ever-changing subject and an 
inexhaustible topic. So in contemplative photography, we can use this approach to ask ourselves, how do I look? Or how do I look on the external surface and how do I look in my interior? And then we can use self-portrait as a gentle tool that might help us in revealing our own true self through self-acceptance and freedom from judgment. It can also be a medium that leads us to true humility, recognizing the power of ego and eventually letting this ego go.